This is no lie, a killer effect from one of the finest magical thinkers on the planet, and he's giving it to you for free. That's pretty great, right? Yes, it is. Thank you. I'm glad we agree. Back at the Kung Fu Saloon, we're hanging with longtime friend Nate Staniforth, and we are meeting Shannon, Marie, and Brendan, right? Nate's got an amazing trick. You guys are going to love this. I love magic that's simple and direct and straightforward. I travel all around the world when I do my show, and I wanted to invent a piece of magic that didn't need language, that was purely visual, that I could do for anyone, and they would understand it. We're going to use a book of matches. I want to do this so everyone can see. Wherever you're sitting, I want you to see. We're going to take one match. Will you help me? Hold these just there. I'm going to take the burnt match and put it in my hand. I want you to see this. Look. It's not burned anymore. Open the match burn. <laughs> Do you want to learn how to do this? Yes. All you got to do is toast. Did they? Are you guys ready to learn this one? Yeah. So here's the trade-off. The performance of this illusion is dead easy. You can do it anywhere, anytime. The trade-off is that you have to do some setup at home before you can ever perform this for an audience. You're going to set up the matchbook by doing two things. The first is that you're going to pre-burn one match and just leave it in the matchbook. So you'll open it, take a lighter, you'll light it on fire, blow it out. Your second job is to make a match that has two sides. The first side is a normal match head. The second side looks identical, but you've taken a razor blade and you've scratched off the white part and replaced it with sticky tack. You know that stuff you use to put posters up on the no wall? No way, can, can yeah. I touch? Yeah. That's not the match head. So it looks like a match. And then I've taken a Sharpie marker and colored the other side of the match. You're creating a match that can be burned on one side and look as if it's unburned. That is diabolical. Yeah. That is so good. Here's what you need to make this. You need some sticky tack that you'd use to hang up posters. You need some razor blades. You need a Sharpie marker. You need a book of matches. So we're all just going to do this together. It's arts and crafts time. We're going to build this so we can yeah. all perform it, all right? So to shave it off, is there a particular technique? You just sort of drag it? There's, there's not. You're just going to flip it over, and you take your razor blade, and you're just going to very gently slice off away right, from your on. fingers. Oh, she's got it. Yeah. Oh my god, that was perfect. You got it first try. That's she it, right. nailed it. So let's just assume we've all got it for a moment. Yeah. The second step is to take a little bit of sticky tack. You need less than you think. You're gonna take a tiny ball and you're just going to sort of mash it into the back of the match head to create the back side of the match. The last thing that you'll do is you'll take the Sharpie marker and you'll color the match. It doesn't have to be exact, you just want it to look like the other side. And this is important because we use this in another scam school effect. People don't think of the fact that matches are black on one side and cardboard colored on the other. Right. So you wanna make sure that you have that persistence of vision. So, all of you now have a matchbook with one burnt match and one double-sided match that can appear to be burnt or unburnt as you need. So the performance of this illusion is very straightforward. You would begin by opening the matchbook towards yourself so the audience can't see the matches, and your first move is to use your thumb and peel out the burnt match and hide it from view. So when you show the matches to everyone else, they can't see that there's one match exactly. That's You've great. Got it. You don't have to make a big deal of saying, look, there are no burnt matches in here. Yeah. <laughs> but but you, do, you do want to be demonstrative enough that people recognize this image so that when they see the burnt match return, it feels like a match. So then you'll pull your prepared match out. You have to then close the matchbook in a way that people don't see the burnt match, and you want to return the burnt match to its position. You'll pivot the whole matchbook. You'll just take the whole thing and turn it upside down, and then close it. Now you gotta figure out which is the gimmick side. You have to try, you have to try really hard to not light the post-it, right, because that won't burn. So the way I do it is I put my finger against the sticky tack, and I light it, and then blow it out right away. If you let it burn for too long, 
it will singe the sticky tack. Shannon just discovered a good point. This is very convincing to Shannon, not so convincing to me, who's looking at the sticky tack side. Sure. So you want to light it and Pull then keep it down, it down right. okay. and blow it. So now she's got she's got her allegedly burned match. So you'd hand yeah. this to Brennan and ask him to keep the matchbook safe. And then you'd hold out your open hand, your empty hand, and you'd set the match down on your hand in such a way that the burnt side is face up, so it looks like you're holding a burnt match. Now, I noticed that you have it arranged across, what is that, your lifeline, That's I right. guess? So that when you close your when hand, When I close my hand, flip. it just naturally turns over. Just like you did, you I tilt my wrist back a little bit because you want it to just yeah. fall, right. You got it. Yep. And there's this moment where everyone looks down and they see that the match is unburned, and you don't want to allow them to dwell on that because then they'll want to pick up the match and look at it. Yeah. So the reason you make it reappear is that it immediately takes the heat off of this match and returns it to the matchbook. There we go. Oh! All right, Shannon, here's the question. I feel like you've got this. Are you ready to perform it for us? Uh, yes. Sure. Yes. All right. I nailed it. Awesome. Ahoy, Shannon. I hear you're a wizard. I am. Well, prove it. All right, I have a normal matchbook right here. Yeah. I'm going to take a match. Yeah. I'm going to light it. Yeah. So good so Get far. Ready. You're batting a thousand. Get ready. All right. Well, you want me? You want me to hold that? Sure. I'm gonna right. hold it. Okay. I'm gonna put this match that I just lit in my hand. Yeah. Made a fist. Yeah. It's Not the burned. unburned. Unburned. But where did it go? Check it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> the bird went in there! She's a wizard! Great she wizard. has dragons! Yay. Look out, Lannisters! I've seen Nate completely kill with this effect. Whether it's a group of magicians or a bunch of normal, actual human beings, all it takes is a little bit of preparation, the littlest bit of sleight of hand, and you've got real wizard powers in your hand. That's what his whole book is about. Here is Real Magic is coming out next month, and it is an amazing memoir that will take you on a journey that makes you realize what it means to love something so much that you step away from it only to discover it all over again. Please pre-order this book. Nate is a good friend of the show, and you should check out the complete interview we did where we spent a half hour talking about magic theory and what it means to be an actual magician. All of that right here on the channel. And of course, you can hear about his new open source project. Nate's got a million things going on, but I've got one thing going on, and that's a mind to get another beer. That's it's scam school. Can't get too heady on this stuff. I'm out of here. And sometimes I'll do magic for people. I love magic. But... It's hard to work drunk, ain't it? <laughs> just, just say, uh, I, I'll say, I'll say, oh, I hear you're a wizard now, yeah. and you're like, you're right, I am. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs>